What's going on guys? So in the last presentation, what we did was we finished our, I think we had finished the uh, computing the forward propagation actually in the previous video, and then we had computed our grad gradients. And in order to do that, what we did was we passed in our loss, passed in our variables that we want, and then it outputted the gradients corresponding to this loss, right? So what it was doing is taking the partial differential of the loss with respect to all the variables and then passing and then returning those gradients of equal size and length to model.variables, right? So the next step we want to do is we actually want to apply those gradients. Um, and how we want to do that is what we, what we, we'll do it a bare bones, okay? So pretty much new variables. Okay, so this is just um, some pseudocode. So our new variables, what do we want to do? Um, you know, we sort of want to do old variables. And then what we want to do is we want to subtract and we want to subtract our learning rate and we want to multiply by delta, right? So with each gradient, we want to multiply it by the learning rate corresponding to how much of that change we want enacted. And then we want to adjust it by taking the negative of it. And that's because in gradient descent, you're taking the positive slope. In gradient descent, we want to go down our slope. So we're taking the negative of it, right? So it's much easier to do this with some sort of, um, some sort of, uh, this comprehension it makes things much easier for us, right? So we know our variables are called model dot variables, capital V. Okay. So we want to use list comprehension, right? Because we want to um, do something. So we want to do something for um, variable for delta in um, we don't need TF zip, so we can do in zip. So our V is going to be our variable. So that's going to be model dot variables. So what it's saying is, okay, zip up and return as V perform this on it. One item from model dot variables, which is weight, weight, bias, bias. And we want to retrieve the Delta. Um, I called it gradients over here. So we'll just leave it as gradients, okay? So it's saying, okay, because model.variables and gradients are the exact same list and they're aligned with the variables and the um, gradients, what we can do is actually take each one and what do we want to do with it, okay? Well, what we want to do is we pretty want, much want to um, subtract one from the other and multiply by the learning rate. But there's actually an easier, uh, more comprehensive way to do that. So V is our variable. Um, TensorFlow has something called a sign sub, and that just pretty much says that, okay, subtract this element from it, from V. Okay. So it's pretty much just doing a subtraction. So we can say V dot assign sub. And what do we want to subtract from V? We want to subtract Delta times learning rate. Okay. And learning rate, let's just set it as E is three. Okay. So what are we doing here? We're saying that for every, zoom out a bit. What are we doing here? We're saying that for every element of model dot variables, take its corresponding gradient. Okay. So weight one, weight one gradient, take that weight one gradient, multiply it by the learning rate and subtract it from V. Create a list of it and make it the new model dot variables, which is equivalent to self dot variables and how we declared it here, right? And then when this is taken care of model dot variables, and then our next loop comes, the learning rate is going to be updated with our new loss and model dot variables, right? Which is exactly what we wanted to do. So what we can do is let's just print this old variables is not defined. Okay, maybe it would be right. Good idea to remove the pseudocode. Integer deliver by zero. Make that a hundred. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, we have some good news. Our loss seems to be decrementing by a little bit, but not by a lot. Okay. All right. Let's just set it. How about um, maybe that learning rate is just too small, right? So let's just set it as that. Okay, again, not much of a decrease, but we actually don't know whether or not this loss 
is actually corresponding into a improvement in accuracy, right? Because we actually don't, you know, what does this loss mean? Well, it means it's not performing very well, but, you know, compared to what? So that's why we sort of need to implement our, which was the point of this section, which was um, to show loss and accuracy. And how do we implement accuracy? Well, when you think about accuracy, it's actually pretty easy. So let's just do some pseudocode over here. So what is our accuracy? Well, pretty much it's just our y predict. Um, you know, it's y predict equal to y. You know, accuracy, right? How many of these are greater or how many of the predictions are true. And because we're, our final output is a sigmoid function, uh, we want everything above 0 0.5 to be considered a one, right? And if, it's, if the output is 0 0.4, we'll consider that a zero, right? So, there's, um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna define it here. So we have our compute loss, so we want something to compute our accuracy. So we can call it the compute ac. Um, we'll call it self, and actually it's very similar to our compute loss, right? So pretty much all we need is our y predict, y true, and we want to return some sort of accuracy. So for our accuracy, we're going to use um, TF math operations, but I'm going to explain exactly what exactly we're going to do. Um, there's sort of a creative thing where you could actually use tf.round. So for example, Y prediction, okay, is a number between 0 and 1. Anything above 0 0.5, we want to be a 1. We want to be considered a 1, right? So it would be a good way, it would be, be nice if we could take all these Y predictions and just turn them into 1s if they're greater than 1 point, uh, point 0.5. So one thing we can do is we can actually use tf.round and take Y predict, Y predict. And what TF round does is, um, just like ceiling and flooring, if it's a TF, TF round, anything above 0.5 will round up to 1, anything lower will round down to 0. So this is actually doing exactly what we want to do. Uh, what you can also do is you can also use um, TF.greater, so you can say greater than 0.5, 1, otherwise 0. So there's another way to do it, but this is, um, I think, is one of the simpler ways to do it. And then what we want to do is we want to use sort of a TF.equal statement, which is pretty much just saying, okay, how, how, how equal, or sorry, how close is this vector, or sorry, this tensor of true values? So how true is this to this, okay? And then it's gonna produce a true or false for each one, right? So again, this rounds up to zero or one, y true is actually zero or one. So by doing t, uh, tf.equal, it's pretty much just gonna be true, true and false. And because y true at this point is a NumPy um, array, because we passed it in, and we want it to work with TF math ops, we're just going to um, turn that into a tensor quickly, a TF constant tensor, well, just like that, okay? Just so you can see it. So again, what is this returning? Well, this is returning true and false for each element of our y predict and y true. Um, and we actually don't want, um, you know, true and false. We actually want uh, the summation of it, right? So actually, if you just take um, the mean of it, we'll just use uh, NumPy mean for the time being. Um, what this is doing is, if we have true, true, false, false, taking the mean of that, when you take the means of Booleans, it actually will just convert to ones and zeros. So it's saying, what is the mean of one, one, zero, zero? Well, it's gonna be two divided by four or 0. 0.5, which is pretty much what we want. That is our accuracy, right? So tf.mean, tf equal will do that for us, okay? So let's just see if that actually makes any sense. So that's our loss right there. And we can say, okay, that's our loss, but what we really want is our accuracy here. Accuracy is usually um, to, um, well, because it's, you know, either 0 0.5 or 0 0.75, really only need to need a two, two decimal places. And what is our accuracy? Well, we call it compute accuracy. So we're just going to use model dot compute accuracy. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make things a little, okay, doesn't like that. Doesn't like that in. Okay, so what we're gonna do is use model.compute accuracy. Our first input our first argument we pass in is y prediction. What is y prediction? It is model x. And what's our second element of the prediction? Y true, which is Y save, run that. Doesn't like it, didn't delete the CETL code, should put those as comments. Doesn't like that, NumPy is not defined. We can go over here, import NumPy as MP if we want to use it. You better tell, tell, us, tell us to import it. And we can see that, okay, the loss is, decreasing, but that accuracy is, is 0.5, right? So, and um, it actually might be nice just to look at the final, at the very end, you know, what exactly are our final outputs of our feed forward, okay? So think about this. So we have 0 0.55, 0 0.54, 0 0.55, 0 0.5, okay? So what this is doing is in, in um, in compute accuracy, remember, let's see what we're doing with it again. Anything that's 0.5 or higher rounds up to one, right? So this tensor here is rounding to one, 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 one at this point over here. Then it then it's being said, is TF constant y true equal to that? So this is one, 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 and it's being compared to one, zero, zero, one. And the answer is it's gonna, and the answer is it's gonna evaluate to true, false, false, true, right? Okay, true, false, false, true. How many of those trues, how many of those are trues? Two out of four, 50% accuracy. Now, we played around with the learning rate a bit, but actually, you know, our architecture isn't very uh, complicated. Uh, let's just add some more neurons, uh, give it a more uh, capacity, and we can sort of see we still have that same problem, right? Okay, let's just, let's just increase the number of epochs. Let's try that. Okay, so it started at 0.75, but the reason why is probably because just because of the random initialize of weights, um, this evaluated to true, false, 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 right? So that's why it's 75% accuracy. But these aren't very, very good guesses. Um, you can sort of see how um, we sort of want this to move to the extreme where this is closer to 0.99, right? And then we want these to become closer to zero and zero, right? So let's just set the learning rate even more closer to uh, 0.1, run that again, and then we can see we actually have trained our model to completion. Let's see exactly what, what happened here. So our loss decreased upon every iteration to the point that around 0.5 or around 0.2, for example, our accuracy finally passed one. What this sort of said is that at this point, at around epoch 500, uh, this accuracy, only three out of four of these were actually evaluating properly. Right? But at this point, um, it's hard to tell which one, but these two um, were driven closer to zero by, by playing around with the weights. And these were driven above 0.5 um, to being closer to one, which, which is indicated by the lower loss, right? So there is still significant loss to be had here. And this accuracy is 100%. But the point is that our model um, for this simple example is actually fully trained, but we can actually um, really train these models by adding, by adding more epochs, uh, more capacity, and we can really drive these um, solutions or these predictions to, um, to being true or false in their entirety. So we're gonna plot that, we're gonna look at that, and we're gonna talk about that next time, and we'll see you then.